Great. Now that we're most of the way through our second series of lectures, let's get back to sentence diagramming and look at how we would add modifiers to things that fill nominal slots. So in our last series of lectures, we learned how to diagram a basic sentence with a, with a subject and a predicate, how to add a direct object in, in. And so now we can look at some different ways that we can expand on those noun phrases and add, add some modifiers. So the first thing that we're going to look at is how to diagram an article. And this is something that I, I've demonstrated before, but we've never talked about explicitly, so we might as well do that right now. Uh, to diagram an article on a noun phrase, so we'll say, we'll go ahead and draw our simple sentence. We'll say the toy rang. To add an article slot, I'm just going to kick off a little modifier line, slant it away from the subject, and place it on that line. So the toy rang. Simple, pretty easy. So let's take a look at how we would do something with an adjective. Now again, there's not a whole lot tricky going on here with modifiers, and it'll get a little bit more difficult once we start talking about prepositional phrases here in a second. But we're going to add an adjective the same way that we would add an ad a determiner or an article. So we'd have something, a line poking down for the, and then we'll say the dirty, and then we'll stick with our original sentence, toy rang. So just going to to diagram an adjective, just pop it off that that noun phrase line right there. And then we'll get to adverb. Now, unsurprisingly, we're going to modify verbs or the predicate of the sentence the same way that we're going to modify anything over here in the subject. So we'll go ahead and stick with our sentence. We'll make our slots, diagram our article, our adjective right there. I'm not going to rewrite dirty, but you guys know what the sentence is. Um, we've got our verb, part of our predicate, let's say loudly. So to diagram an adjective, we're just going to kick off a line under the verb over here. So now we get to prepositional phrases. And prepositional phrases are kind of different. They're a little bit more out there because they could actually fulfill both of these slots. As we saw early in our earlier in our example sentences when we were talking about different functions, prepositional phrases stood in for both adjectival and adverbial functions. So we'll take a look first at how to just diagram a prepositional phrase um, modifying a verb and then we'll talk a little bit more about what it would mean to switch them around and have it modifying something else. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's write a sentence. Or let's just stick with our example sentence. We've got the toy over here. Rang. And then we'll say in the bedroom. So that's that's going to be our prepositional phrase. It's going to be in the bedroom in a second. But so let's talk about what a prepositional phrase consists of. Because it's a little more complicated than just doing a simple modifier. So we're not just going to put a line down here and call it a day. We're going to actually kick that line off because we have a in each prepositional phrase we have a noun phrase embedded in there, right? So if we say the toy rang in the bedroom, we have another noun that we have to contend with as well. So what we're going to do to for that is on this diagonal line is where we're going to place our preposition. So we'll, in this case our preposition is, preposition is in, so we'll put that on the diagonal line right here and then we'll go ahead and we'll spell write out bedroom as our noun and then you know from this noun we could also kick off another article or even possibly another adjective so the toy rang in the dirty bedroom and so right here we have this all functioning adverbially answering the question where it's telling us where the toy rang now let's go and look at how that might be different. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll erase that one sentence diagram. We'll start with our basic sentence again. So here we've got the article, we've got toy, and then we'll put rang. So the toy rang, and so we've got another prepositional phrase. Look at, let's look at how we could take that same prepositional phrase and make that function adjectively. So if we kick off a prepositional phrase over here, 
underneath toy, we can use the same prepositional phrase in, we've got bedroom right here, then we got our, an article, and then an adjective. So the toy in the dirty bedroom rang. And so that is functioning adjectively in telling us which toy, right? Because it's not the toy in the clean living room, it's the toy in the dirty bedroom that's ringing. So prepositional phrases, very interesting, and you could now looking at some of these more complex sentences start to come together, you can see how very quickly this could get out of hand. Um, and the last thing that we'll talk about, especially with prepositional phrases, is we looked at an example of how to draw a direct object, but now we'll look at an example of how we would diagram an indirect object as well. Okay, so to diagram an indirect object, we're going to do something similar to what a prepositional phrase look like looks like. So let's go ahead and set up our sentence. So we'll go ahead choose our subject T through and we'll say our direct object is a ball. I've got to extend my line. Okay, so to diagram an indirect object, basically what we would do is we would almost act as if they were the recipient of or the subject of a prepositional phrase. Um, but we're not actually going to put anything here we're going to leave this blank. So we could also fill it in with two. He threw the, the ball to, say, the boy. But when we omit that prepositional phrase and use it as an indirect object, that is what we do. We just, we just leave that blank, and we can fill it in here, and we know that, hey, this is, this is the indirect object.